what are the two things that I say that I would focus on if I got back into general real estate tomorrow? Fizzbos and Facebook. Fizzbos and Facebook. Sandy, you're so smart. Fizzbos and Facebook. And I've been working. This is the crazy part, okay? So I've been working with two agents in Birmingham. Okay? Each one of these agents needed, they needed some business fast. They needed something to happen quickly. So they came to me and said, what can I do? And I said, well, let's go find some Fizzbos. Let's get a handful of Fizbos to prospect to, and let's take a Fizbo listing. Both of those agents hosted one Fizbo open house, took the listing, and both listings are sold. One sold for like three sixty nine, dollars the other one was like four thirty five. dollars One open house, took the listing, sold it. Here's the crazy part. They haven't taken another Fizbo listing since, and they haven't really tried. <laughs> Yeah, I just want y'all to get the frustration that I feel in this coaching role. I don't understand y'all. I don't. I'm trying, but I can't get y'all to speak up. All right? Kevin, thank you for speaking up. But most of the time, nobody takes that opportunity to speak up. They just don't. They're like, well, I don't say nothing. I ain't going to be the dummy that says something. What are you going on? Ask me. What is getting in the way? What, what is it up here? What's, what's keeping you from being successful? And just, I think the best place to start is to realize that you are the problem. You gotta own it, all right? I want you guys to, we're on this mission, right? To evolve you from salespeople to business owners. Who, do y'all know business, does everybody in here know a business owner? Okay. Do your, are, your, are they super successful because they half-ass everything? What if you went to your favorite shop and it was closed? And then you went back the other next day and it was closed again? And you're looking at the hours of operation. You're like, somebody should be here. There's no note on the door. There's no nothing. You guys realize that you're doing the same thing. You got to get up every day and turn your open sign on. All right, which means I can get you on the phone. I'm seeing that you're busy on social media. You're documenting your process. Boy, that time's always working. The problem is, I think you guys should see, is that you're, you're, you're not specialists, you're not business owners, you're hobbyists. You have a hobbyist approach to all this, and it's paying you like a hobby. Good news, bad news. Good news is we can fix it. We can fix this quickly, really quickly. Give me 30 days to build momentum, give me 60 days to close something. But you gotta be coachable, you gotta be disciplined, and you gotta be committed, not interested. You gotta understand that it's gonna suck. But that's what makes it worth it, right? Okay, all right. Anything else, Todd, you have something you wanna say? Anything you wanna get off your chest? No, I'm good. Okay, let's move on. So step one, go to Google and Google Fizbo's for sale in my town. So Fizbo's for sale in Daphne, Fizbo's for sale in Fairhope, Fizbo's for sale in Spanish Fort, Fizbo's for sale wherever. All right, you don't find them there, broaden your search. Try the next town over. Okay, Zillow's the fastest source for Fizbo leads. The one thing I love about Zillow is that it, it will tell you how many days they've been on market and if they've done any price reductions. What's that? And it gives a phone number. And it gives a phone number. Sandy, you're on it today. I got to tell you. Uh, so it's not the only source. We can go to Craigslist. Um, we can go to owners.com, for saleowner.com. But you're just you're going to find some... Uh, you're going to find some overlap, but you're going to find some homes that have already been sold, and you're going to find some that are listed, currently listed with agents. So I, I like Zillow. It's just fast, okay? Fast, and it gives me the data that I want. I want to see, I want to look for the price reductions in the ones that have been on market extended days, okay? And as Sandy pointed out, the phone number's there, so I'm going to call. All right, so the title of this class is Getting Your Foot in the Door with Fizbos, Okay? We have to identify we have a right approach and a wrong approach. All right? 
I believe the wrong approach is calling them and saying, hey, you ready to list? All right, what, what I am proposing is a partnership. We're going to use words like partnership, value, win, win. There is so much I can offer for sale by owner. And there's so much I have to gain from that relationship, even if they never list with me. You see that? Do you understand that? If I'm working with a for sale by owner and I'm documenting everything that I'm doing to help that for sale by owner on social media, uh, big things are gonna happen, okay? If I'm hosting the open houses for that for sale by owner, I'm gonna meet buyers. One thing you guys need to understand with a quickness is that the paper resume is rubbish. If people want to find out about you, they go to your Facebook personal page. That's your digital resume. And then if they're really into social media, they're gonna to try to find you on other platforms. They're gonna to want to see who you are. You know, they may, like this day and age, they may go, well, you know, Sarah's real classy on her page, <laughs> her personal Facebook page, but on TikTok, she's a kind of a wild mess. Right, so they want to see, they're, they're digging back, they're going through your photos, they're looking, okay? They want to see, they want to see that you are a specialist and not a hobbyist. They want to see that you're running your business like a business. They want to see that you're busy. They want to see that you're solving problems. They want to see testimonials. They want to see proof, proof that you are who you say you are, all right? You guys got to think about every time you need a professional, okay just ain't okay. I need to be confident. If, I'm a, if you're going to handle the largest investment that I own, you better know your stuff or you don't deserve to get the listing. When I sit down with you, I need to go, that's my guy. That's my girl. She's got this. We, we, we're going to start making some connections here. Some light bulbs are going to start going off. All right. So I know that I'm expecting that a for sale by owner is going to be weary of my intentions because the majority, if not all, of my colleagues that are calling on them are going, hey, you ready to list, ready to list, ready to list? Now, what Todd has experienced is that, that this tactic, this aggressive salesy tactic, does work. It does work because he's talking to people that will say, that are saying, I'm never going to list. I'm going to sell this on my own. And then he gets, he calls back, he follows up, and they've already listed. How many times does that happen? Three times, four times? At least. So a handful of times. Yeah. <clears throat> what was that, 14 days? I think you have way much more to gain by using, uh, it's gonna be a combination of things, okay? We're gonna be executing some critical things. We're gonna be showcasing our value. <clears throat> and that's what we want to do, right? We want to, we want to plant a seed that these people need us and that we have a lot to offer. And that this is gonna be a mutually beneficial partnership. Okay? Besides, you guys aren't ready to call these FISBOs up and, and nail the listing over the phone. You ain't there yet. So it's much easier to start my way, the win-win way. And then when you get all big and bad and you get known in the area as the big old badass, no HR people in here? Then call up and go, you, you, better, you need to list with me. I'm the queen of this area, whatever it is. You're going to have that swagger, but you need to work up to that point, right? And you're going to make a lot of friends in the process because you're going at it a different way. You're going at it from a place of value, okay? All right, Todd, yeah. 
You ready? You, you want to role play this Fizbo call with me? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. We'll, we're going to take it easy, okay? Um, well, let me hear how you, I'm, so I'm the first sale man owner. Let me hear um, how, what's your opening line, okay? Ring, ring. On you, right? Yeah, you're you're the agent. I'm Fisbo. Ring ring. Hey, who's this? Hey, this is Todd with Jasonville Real Estate in Fairhope. Who am I speaking with? Hey, this is uh, Jason Will. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jason. Hey, I've seen you. you have a property for sale by chance at 123 Main Street in Fairhope. I do. How can I help you? Well, just out of curiosity. Uh, the inventory right now seems to be very, very slim in, in the market, and I'm just trying to keep up to date with all the properties that are out there. Uh, I'm just curious if I were to bring you a buyer, would you be willing to pay a buyer agent fee? What would that look like? Well, uh, Jason actually be about half of your normal listing fee, roughly, which is normally six percent. And uh, you know, if I were to bring you a buyer, you know, that's where, that's where we would be at. Uh, I appreciate the time, but I don't want to list. I'm not interested in listening. Completely understand. I uh, appreciate your apprehension. Sure do. Uh, you know, look, I'm just trying to help you sell your home. And in theory, does it not make sense that we try to get as many eyes as we can on our property if we're trying to sell? All right, so let's pause there, okay? So there's a lot of good things that Todd has done, but it shows me, right, that... He needs more preparation. He needs more practice. He needs to be doing this more. So even though Todd's on a script call relentlessly, you know, four mornings a week just about, he still needs more practice. So Sandy, you and Todd can be working through this. You know, before you guys get on the call, you guys could do some one-on-one -on -one role play, which would be really, really powerful. Uh, but some things I want to caution you on, okay? For sale by owners are apprehensive they are going to be constantly questioning your motives and they want to get you off the phone they want to get off the phone with you as fast as possible okay so you need to use less words okay you need to ask just short concise questions and you need to be quiet and let them answer and their answer is going to determine which way you're going to go the uh, the foundation of todd's call was good identifying what i like to do is identify Instead of just saying, hey, do you have the home for sale at 123 Main Street? I want to say, hey, is your home at 123 Main Street still for sale? Yes, okay, I go to the next one. All right, so once I identify that it's still for sale, my next question is, are you willing to work with an agent that brings your buyer? Frankie? Can I add something to that? Yeah. There's a guy that I know in South Carolina, he's an agent. He's really successful and he, he uses that same approach that you're just not talking about, but he, 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 uses, he uses different wording. Instead of asking, are they still for sale? He asks, he asks uh, what's my owner? Are they still accepting offers or not? And he's, he, he can't speak you know, very well with his books. I love it. I love it. And what you could do is A-B test that, right? So test, is it still for sale versus are you still accepting offers? And see where it goes. I mean, a lot of this too, we've got to keep in mind, is that a people get all uptight about scripts, right? I don't want to sound like a robot. Well, a script is just a it's it's just a guideline. It's just a, it's just a suggestion. You can take this and formulate it in your own words and then deploy it, right? What does it make it sound like you? You need to feel good about it. You need to own this language. But the I, what I want you guys to acknowledge is is that. Who's the number one golfer right now, Joey? Uh, right now? Or uh, uh, Scheffler, yeah. Scheffler? Okay. Scheffler doesn't show up to the Masters or whatever and practice on the first tee. He goes to the range and hits balls. Hours and hours of range balls. Does that ring any bells with y'all? It's picking up with your he gets paid, his preparation is direct correlation to his income. He's obsessed with golf and he loves it. 
He loves it. Okay? What's different about y'all's preparation? So again, good news, bad news. Simple, not easy. You can make this simple shift in your mind that you're going to become obsessed with those things I had up here. You're going to become obsessed with preparation because what you guys are doing right now is you're practicing on your paychecks. So if I'm, what's the guy's name again? Line? Scheffler. 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 All right, so if I'm Scheffler, listen, I ain't been doing like the, the however many weeks before the Masters, I ain't been doing a damn thing but drinking beer and Netflix binging. And then I just show up to the first tee of the Masters and just like give it hell. I'm practicing on my paycheck. I, well, there's a, there's always there's always an outlier, right? There always is. But we got to be honest with ourselves, and we got to be honest with that. Like, you know, I would say a great example is Andrew. Andrew's an outlier because he doesn't phone prospect. But here's the truth, and Andrew makes a great living. He's about to put together his best year ever in real estate, and it's like, whew, it's it's a lot. But if Andrew phone prospected, he would make twice the money he makes, okay? So John Daly was obviously content with where he was in life, and that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. Just to support what you're saying though, he caught me off guard, and preparation was talking about, and I had to practice a physical description a while, but normally I'm trying to ask questions about to get my interest, why are you, why do you have for sale, those kind of things? I just well, what I, and I'm saying that's all well and good, but these are the type of questions I want you to ask when you actually show up at the front door. I want you to be really quick. That's what I'm saying, lack of preparation before. Go right to, as fast as you can, when can I come see it? When can I come see it? Nine times out of ten, they don't know any, I'm, I'm under contract with a for sale buy owner right now, and I, I'm losing money because I'm, my buyer, easy as pie. I'm doing more work for the seller than I am for my own buyer. And it's just, I've been absolutely ridiculous. Like they don't know anything about selling a home. They're asking me all these questions nonstop. Like what does is, what is title do? Uh, how much do they owe? Uh, or how much do we owe title? And my buyer barely asked me, what, uh, was the inspection good? Was the appraisal good? But. That's one of the things, like, is if you just have a conversation with them, like, from the get-go, you, I mean, it's, it makes things a lot easier. You just find out whether or not they know anything, then you can start, you know, giving your knowledge. Yep. And I would, I would be having conversations with those for sale buyers after we close, going, hey, you guys realize I did double the work for half the money? And I need some referrals. <laughs> you go hook me up with some oh, referral. Oh, I, am. I found them a rental place too. Yeah, you really like I've gone above and beyond with y'all, and if y'all had sold this home on your own, like all the stuff you didn't know scares the crap out of me of what would have happened if I hadn't stepped in here. And so, like I'm expecting y'all to be like my some of my top referral partners for life. And that's the truth. I mean, you you solved a problem. You you deserve the right to ask for the business. You earn the right to ask for the business. Okay, so Mr. Seller, is your home at 123 Main Street still on the market? Why, yes it is. Great, I'd love to come see it. I wanna make sure it's a fit for some buyers I'm working with. Uh, as you said, Todd, it's a lack of inventory. We gotta get really creative. I gotta know everything that's on the market, not just what's listed. So, hey, would mornings or afternoons be better? All right, so there's a lot of different variations of how this is gonna go. They're gonna, like I could just, if I, as soon as I say I'm with J-Part Real Estate, they're like, I don't wanna list, I'm not listing. So I might say, hey, this is Jason Will with J-Part Real Estate. Thanks so much for taking my call. Hey, I want to like, um, what's the word? I wanna put your mind at ease right off the bat and let you know I'm not calling to list your home. I will never ask you to list your home. Now you may, Ask me to list, but I'm never gonna ask you to list your home. I'm simply calling to A, see if your home at 123 Main Street is still in the market, and B, 
to see if you're working with an agent, you're work, willing to work with an agent brings you a buyer. Now, the good news is, is that you're, if you do enough of these, you're rarely gonna get hit with a curveball. They all have the same objections, the same comments, the same everything, right? Yeah. Oh, I have a question about that. Yeah. It, uh, you might be about to answer it. Um, I have had somebody tell me they're not willing to give a buyer's agent commission. I, I haven't figured out what to say to that other than good luck, good luck bye. Because <laughs> um, like, I'm not gonna, I don't know what to do. I, yeah. I'm stumped on that. So I would, like, look, everybody see the R's raising the dues? Our, our dues, everybody, anybody see that? Oh, yeah. yeah, so they're, they're raising the dues. So we can get all upset about that, or we can go, hey, NAR does a lot for us. NAR does a lot of research for us, and we can go and look at the NAR data. But NAR will quickly tell you that there's like 94, 96%, I mean, it's high 90s, I think, of the buyers out there are working with real estate agents. So let's just say it's a 90, a, that 96% of today's home buyers are working with real estate agents. So this for sale by owner is saying, I'm gonna stick with my 4%. I like those odds. Doesn't make a lot of sense, right? So you could say, hey, listen, I always, and Todd, this is why I forgot to give Todd kudos on, he was validating my objections. Oh, I get it. Oh yeah, I totally understand your apprehension. And you, need to, you guys need to get in, in the habit of doing that. That's the best way to initially handle an objection is to go, I'm here, I hear you. I hear you and I understand your concern, but have you considered this? I hear you and I understand your concern, but have you considered or are you aware of the data that shows that 96% of today's home buyers work with real estate agents? The market out here is not easy. They need us more than ever, which is why I'm calling because the inventory is super low. But that leaves you a 4% chance of selling on your own. So here, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna follow up with you in a week or so just to make sure, because I can't tell you how many people have told me they will never work with a real estate agent on the buying or selling side and end up working with a real estate agent on both sides. Because you figure this out over time. Now, not to say that you can't be successful. I'm hoping you are. I actually give them kudos. It's smart doing what you're doing. In this market, I mean, what are you losing by giving yourself four to eight weeks to sell on your own? Way to go. Kudos. But you may need me, and you, or you may need one of my buyers. And so what do you have to lose? I'm never going to ask you to list, and I'm only going to bring stuff to the table that's going to help both of us. That's a win-win. Okay? There's only one buyer for your home, and I'm hoping to work with some of the other ones. So that's it. And in the meantime, I, you got me on speed dial. If you need something, you need a document, you need me to pre-qualify, help you get somebody pre-qualified, you got a negotiation question, you need some staging help, you wanna learn how to bulletproof this transaction? Now, that does bring me to this one caveat is that I think you do need to have a line in the sand because if you, if you give for sale by owners everything, they're gonna take it. So I would always draw the line of price. I would give them feedback from the open house on price because when people come into an open house, there's two things I wanna to talk to them about, price and condition. Because I know those are the two keys to getting a home sold in any market, price and condition. Real estate is a price war and a beauty contest all rolled into one, okay? So those, those are the two most important things. If it's not selling, then it's not compelling in one of those two areas, price or condition. Either the condition needs to be improved to meet the price, or the price needs to be lowered to meet the current condition. You guys, these are, I mean, like, these are scripts you need to be cranking, you need to like burn them into your mind, you need to be cranking them out. That's why, Ty, when you're in the shower, you're gonna stop singing, and you're gonna start role playing with yourself, okay? <laughs> your wife's probably gonna think you're crazy, but she ain't gonna think this pile of money you bring home in 90 days is crazy. Or this dream vacation you're taking her on because you're crushing it is crazy. So whatever it is, you're gonna look crazy while you're driving that big truck. This, this ball guy's talking to himself over here. Look, look at him. He's just, he's pointing, he's all animated with himself. Hey, who cares, all right? This is gonna pay off big, all right? 
So getting your foot in the door with a for sale by owner starts with the preview call. The preview call should be short, or short and sweet. We want to identify that the home is still for sale, that they're willing to work with a real estate agent that brings them a buyer, and then from there, we're going to set the appointment. All right, now some common objections we can get in these gaps are, well, I don't want a list. I appreciate that. I understand your apprehension, just like Todd said, but let me tell you something, let me put your fears at ease. Never gonna ask you to list. That's not why I'm calling, I, I promise you, I'll make that commitment to you right now. I will never ask you if I can list your property. I'm just calling to help you and hopefully help some buyers out there that are desperate for housing. Now, if you were a for sale owner at the under end of that call, how would you feel about me? Am I making some good points? Okay, let me see what you, what, what do you, what do you, what do you offer here, Jason? I, I'd love to come preview it. I wanna, I'm much more likely to recommend a home that I've seen in person. So I wanna come, and I've also made a commitment to my buyers not to show them anything that doesn't meet their needs. So 10 minutes, that's all I'm asking. 10 minute preview, in and out, that's it. What do you got to lose? Mornings or afternoons better? They'll say, well, I've got some great pictures on Zillow. Go to Zillow and check it out. I appreciate that. I'm actually on Zillow right now looking at it. But I'm sure you can appreciate the fact that, you know, sometimes pictures don't do a property justice or sometimes they're too polished. You can't see everything in a picture. So again, I'm much more likely to recommend a buyer. I've made that commitment that I will preview every home before I show it to them because I don't want to waste their time. I don't want to waste yours and I certainly don't want to waste mine. That makes sense? Oh yeah, that makes sense. Okay, great. Well, morning or, mornings or afternoons better. 